Hello there, Kids Church. It's Miss Amy. Welcome to another online Kids Church. Today, we're going to be starting a four-week series on the book of Jonah. Did you know that Jonah is only four chapters long? So we're going to be able to read a whole book of the Bible in the next four four kids churches. That's pretty awesome. So come along with me as today we read chapter one in the book of Jonah. If you have your Bible, now's the time to go get it. We're going to be looking at the beginning of Jonah's story. It's time now for our opening prayer, the Johnny Appleseed song. So have your big singing voices and follow me as we sing this prayer together. Oh, the Lord's been good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, like the sun and the rain and the apple seed. The Lord's been good to me. Amen, 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 amen. The book of Jonah is such a great story about a guy who was asked by God to deliver a message. We can find the book of Jonah right before the New Testament begins. It's found in the Old Testament, so before Jesus was born. You can see in this chart, Jonah is in the lime green middle section called Minor Prophets. And we can be reminded that a prophet is someone who has a message from God or a teaching from God. And so we know since Jonah is found in the Minor Prophets section, that Jonah is a prophet or a messenger from God. And Jonah has something that God has asked him to share. So let's see what God has asked of this prophet, Jonah. Who wrote this book? Well, the prophet Jonah himself was probably the author of his own story. Why was this book written? Jonah shows Israel that God does not punish people who repent and are sorry for their sins. Remember, sin is something that separates us from God or something that we shouldn't be doing. And repent is asking forgiveness of for those things that we shouldn't have done. What do we learn about God in this book? God forgives his disobedient prophet and gives Jonah a second chance. God also forgives the people of a certain city. God does not punish people who repent. Remember, repent means to ask forgiveness. What is special about this book? God shows love for the foreign people in a certain city as well as his own Hebrew people. When was this book written? The book of Jonah was written about 760 B.C. Remember, Jesus was said to have been born about the year zero. So this is negative 760. So we can think that this happened about 760 years before Jesus was born. Now that you have your Bible out, place it on the big chapter one. Mine is in red. I'm going to be calling out the verse numbers as we go. So make sure you put your finger on all the verses as we read this together. Here is the word of the Lord. Jonah runs away from the Lord. Here we go. Big chapter one, verse one. Put your finger there. A message from the Lord came to Jonah. He was the son of Amittai. The Lord said, Go to the great city of Nineveh. Preach against it. The sins of its people have come to my attention. We're at verse 3. Put your finger on 3. But Jonah ran away from the Lord. He headed for Tarshish. So he went down to the port of Joppa. There he found a ship that was going to Tarshish. He paid the fare or the fee and went on board. 
Then he sailed for Tarshish. He was running away from the Lord. Verse 4, find little 4. But the Lord sent a strong wind over the Mediterranean Sea. A wild storm came up. It was so wild that the ship was in danger of breaking apart. Verse 5. All of the sailors were afraid. Each one cried out to his own God for help. They threw the ship's contents or items into the sea. They were trying to make the ship lighter. But Jonah had gone below deck. There he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. Verse 6. The captain went down to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call out to your God for help. Maybe he'll pay attention to what's happening to us. Then we won't die. Verse 7. The sailors said to one another, Come, let's cast lots to find out who is to blame for getting all into all of this trouble. So they did, and Jonah was picked. Verse 8, they said to him, What terrible thing have you done to bring all of this trouble on us? Tell us. What did you do for a living? Where do you come from? What is your country? What people do you belong to? Verse 9. He answered, I'm a Hebrew. I worship the Lord. He is the God of heaven. He made the sea and the land. Verse 10. They found out he was running away from the Lord. That's because he had told them. Then they became terrified, scared. So they asked him, How could you do a thing like that? Verse 11. The sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, What should we do to you to make the sea calm down. Verse 12, fine little 12. Pick me up and throw me into the sea, Jonah replied. Then it will become calm. I know it's my fault that this terrible storm has come on you. Verse 13, instead of doing what he said, the men did their best to row back to land, but they couldn't. The sea got even rougher than before. Verse 14. Then they cried out to the Lord. They prayed, Lord, please don't let us die for taking this man's life. After all, he might not be guilty of doing anything wrong. So don't hold us accountable for killing him. Lord, you always do what you want to. Verse 15. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard into the sea. And the stormy sea became calm. Verse 16. When the men saw what had happened, they began to have great respect for the Lord. They offered a sacrifice to him and they made promises to him. Verse 17. But the Lord sent a huge fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. Here ends the reading of God's holy word, and together we say, thanks be to God. There is a lot going on in today's story of chapter 1 in Jonah, and we see here 
that God sent a whale to keep Jonah safe once the sailors threw him overboard into the stormy waters. And that's why Jonah is usually referred to as the water story, or there's usually a big giant whale when talking about the story of Jonah, because it was the whale that kept Jonah safe. Do you remember for how long? Chapter 1 verse 17 says, Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. That is a really long time if you think about it, to be inside of a whale. It's time now to look at our SOAP method of studying scripture. S-O-A-P. S is the scripture, and that's Jonah chapter 1. O is the observation. What happened in the scripture? Try your best to retell the story as briefly as you can, as short as you can. And this is so hard for me because Jonah chapter 1 is full of so much stuff. So let's see if I could do it briefly. Jonah chapter 1 is about Jonah who decided to run away from God on a ship. But God sent a storm and Jonah decided to have the sailors ditch him overboard to stop the storm. And instead of drowning in the water, God sent a whale for Jonah to live. Now the A, the application How do I apply this story to my life? What does this story mean to my own life? And that can be different from my ideas to your ideas. But for me, Jonah chapter 1 tells me that I should never run away from God. God will always find me. P, the prayer. This can also be something that you decide to say on your own regarded to the scripture observation and application. But for now, we could say something like this. Dear God, each time I feel away from you, I know that that's not true, that you are always near to me. Amen. So there it is. There's our study of SOAP, S-O-A-P, for Jonah chapter 1. Good job. Join with me next week as we continue learning about Jonah. What's going to happen to him once he's inside that whale? We're going to be reading chapter 2 next week, and I hope to see you there. But for now, let's join together saying the prayer that Jesus taught us to say, the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks for joining with me today, Kids Church. God loves you.